we're off to the races. Happy New Year, Year. everyone. Hi. Okay, here's the most exciting part. Look who's back. Lauren. <laughs> all better, all better. So happy, happy to have Lauren back. Yay. Yeah, it took me out, guys. I'm glad I made it through the holidays, but it was like, whew, it was rough last week. <laughs> I was well, sad like I told not her, to be here. You want to get sick when it's time to go back to work, not when you're on vacation. You know, you've That's got fair. to remember as kids, you didn't want to get sick when you're on vacation. You wanted to get sick when you had to go back to work. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Lori? Good to see you and everyone I'm doing else. great. You know, I got to bring up something again from last week, because one of the things that Michael said that I just loved, and we put it in the chat, was automation needs supervision. And what I just love about that is I'm always talking about QuickBooks and syncing the data, and I sound like I'm a Luddite, like I'm not into technology, which is not true. I just have not had the right way to express you've got to check it. you got to use it as an advantage, but you can't let it run amok, as my mother used to have that old expression. <laughs> Don't let it run amok. But automation needs supervision was just a beautiful sentence he used. I, I mean, there was so many good tidbits out of that. So if anybody missed it, check it out. We talked with a CPA about tax season, getting ready for tax season and getting documents ready. And that's where that came from. But I just wanted to bring that up again, because I thought that was an awesome, um, ex awesome expression. I love that too. It kind of goes in hand with um, your conversation with Alex not too long ago too. It does. It does. I know. I actually have been thinking that there's a lot of things that are really kind of being similar across the board on yeah. things that I'm seeing. I, I was actually going to mention something else on that that I'm going to bring up um, later on. I'm seeing kind of cross-reference. Well, you know, my latest favorite statement, and I'll say this before you start, is the truth is always the truth. Ah. That is my new statement. When you find a fundamental truth, it will always be the truth. So with that, Take it away, Lauren. I love it, Lori. Good morning, everyone. I, was, I almost said good afternoon. I've been up so early. <laughs> good morning <laughs> and happy new year. I'm so excited to be back. I know I was um, part of the show last week, but not really because I was under the weather, but feeling great and excited to be here. So let's jump into this intro so we can jump into the meat of the show. Uh, again, good morning. My name is Lauren Simpson. I am with the SBDC or the Small Business Development Center. We are a national program with over a thousand locations across the country, and we offer no-cost services to local small businesses. Now, our services are at no cost to you because your tax dollars have already taken care of all of our fees. Oh, how, how about that for automation? Um, <laughs> If you take a look at the map in front of you, you will see that we are a network comprised of several different SBDC centers. Uh, our network covers the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties. And again, looking at that, my, that uh, map, you'll see that we have locations in Camarillo, uh, Santa Clarita, Pasadena, all the way out to Laverne, throughout Los Angeles, the South Bay, down into Long Beach. <clears throat> Now here's a deeper dive into what it is that we do. We offer no-cost business advising. That means you are able to sit one-on-one -on -one with one of our business experts. And we have experts in various uh, fields from uh, marketing to taxes to if you were just starting out business planning. Um, if you are a handyman looking to go into construction, we have someone specially for you. Uh, if you are looking to get your numbers in order, we have a guru on staff, the guru of all numbers, Miss Lori Williams, and you can set up a session with her. We also offer virtual trainings. They're somewhat similar to the um, webinar you've joined today. This is more so of a show, but we offer comprehensive workshops or webinars that assist you in beginning your business, adapting and or growing. So last but not least, be sure to get in contact with us today. We would love to help you get started or help you along the way. Uh, you can reach us by phone, 866-588-7232, or online, smallbizla.org forward slash new client. Uh, if you are outside of our network, that means you are outside of the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, or Ventura counties. Please be sure to go to americasbdc.org forward slash find your SBDC. I'm going to stop my screen share really quickly. Uh, for those of you who have joined us, our frequent flyers already know the drill, but for those of you who are new to the show, please be sure to put all questions into the Q&A. Again, questions in the Q&A. And then 
if you dare join us in uh, for the party in the chat. And so the chat is going to have tons of useful information as well as links, um, contact information for Lori, uh, our YouTube um, link so that you can check out past and previous shows. And then also, again, the party. So any kind of comment commentary as it relates to the show that we are having today. With that, Lori, I'm going to kick it over to you. Good morning. I am excited about today's guest. I am too. And you know, I'm going to add something on the chat too. Speaking of automation, I've been noticing Zoom did a few changes. And what you want to do, guys, is make sure that your two is to everybody and not host and panelists. I've been seeing some people not recognizing that and they're not being able to have everybody other than us see their comments. So you want to make sure that your two is to everybody. I noticed that... Um, um, Zoom has kind of been doing a standard where it's coming host and panelist a lot. Seems like technology is changing so much. I went through a nightmare at the end of the year where I went from PC to Mac, all the Mac programs, and then went from QuickBooks to zero. I overestimate my level of intelligence sometimes and think I can just do everything all at once. I think I just like to freak myself out. So anyway, that's enough on technology. Okay, to get started today with my words of wisdom, as I'm calling it. So this is an interesting words of wisdom that I'm wanting to share with you guys. And you know, I talk about the fact that what I speak about usually comes up during the week in conversation. And this one is going to tie in great to what we're going to talk about with our guest today. But I'm hearing many of my clients use a term called real company. And some are making these decisions that are not necessarily financially sound, or in their best interest, such as, this is what I hear, well, I wanted to incorporate so I could be a real company. And I'm like, well, why is a sole prop not a real company? You guys know, you've heard me say, about 82% of the companies in the United States operate as a sole prop. Why is that not a real company? Or they say, well, I need to hire, I need to get office space so I can be a real company. And so my question is, what is a real company anyway? So to me, a real company is not, not any company that's reached a certain level or is incorporated or any of the things that the universities, the entrepreneurship world or your peers or someone else will make you think, okay? A real company is a company that's simply engaging in trade. They're selling products or services. Um, this could be the person selling at the farmer's market. They're selling cookies. It could be someone who's selling a personal services, walking dogs, um, mowing lawns. I think one of the things, if we want to have something to aspire to, rather than this elusive, what exactly is a real company, how about a well-managed company from operations to finances? Because that would be a company that would support the financial requirements and the desires of the owners. To me, that's a worthwhile goal. So what I'm saying to you guys is don't let society or your ego make you feel as though you are not a real company. Don't chase some elusive title that is ill-defined and makes absolutely no sense. Be happy and proud of all your accomplishments. Don't let anyone or a lack of any title take away your power. You're all real companies. So that's my real company speech today. As far as upcoming sessions, I had session one for the financial series, session two and session three. These are still going strong. I love offering these because it, once again, it's given people knowledge and power. Now you can easily jump in session two and session three if you miss session one. Session two and session three is all about um, managerial accounting, learning how to create an Excel document or a spreadsheet, I should say, that helps you to understand how to be profitable. Going back to getting financially sound so you can meet owner's desires and goals. I'm also bringing back the what is the best legal structure for my company? What are the tax advantages? This is something that people are still Googling and coming up with a lot of incorrect information about um, legal structure. So bringing that back. The financial series, I repeat every month. The legal structure every couple months or something like that. As far as upcoming shows, next week I asked David um, Horvitz to come back on. He was on, I think it was November or something like that. He's a certified financial planner. And we were talking 
talking about retirement plans for small businesses. The show was a big hit. We had more questions and more conversation time allowed. I thought it would be really good to bring him back now because we're going into tax season and some people are making decisions. Should I invest in some type of retirement? Is there an option for my company? So we're going to delve into that. And then I've got Leo. I might be saying his name, last name wrong. Leo, if you're listening, I got your name wrong probably. Riberio, um, you'll have to correct me when you come on. But he is the CEO of a ritual acai bar. And fascinating story about this company. Great entrepreneurial team. You guys are not only going to learn a lot about his beginnings, what he's trying to achieve, but a lot of um, excitement and inspiration. I'll say it that and, and leave it at that. So. Speaking of excitement and inspiration, I'm so, so excited to have our guest today. Emma Green has extensive experience in starting, growing, and running businesses. She started Quad's Physical Therapy in 2008 while still working at a job in a hospital. In October 2019, 2019 Emma made the leap to be 100% in her own business. I have to continue to tell at least a paragraph of this story. In January 2022, in response to COVID restrictions, Emma Green Programs LLC was formed offering online courses, programs, and memberships. Emma also coaches other physical therapists looking to create their own online business streams. She also has launched two books, I think maybe even on the process of another one. And out of necessity, Emma launched an online existence, which blossomed to a virtual success. And so today we're talking about successful traits for an entrepreneur. Oh, and I just saw a baby. I just saw a baby come by. Hello there. Aren't you just adorable? And who is that? This is Bez, and he just let me know he wanted to come and sit on my knee. And if I don't, he's going to bark the whole time. So I thought, hey, why not? Absolutely. Um, people have seen me catch my cat in midstream of a jump, and I have no choice. You just catch the cat. <laughs> Hi, Bez. I think it's awesome. I, I That is so cute. I love it. He's going to be our first time we've ever had a guest um, dog on the show. So that is perfect. So Emma, you know, I want to start off by saying my personal um, observation, okay? <laughs> so Emma and I have known each other for some time. I'm sure she'll clear in the fill in the story. But Emma, I felt like, you know, 2019, 2020 is when you really blossomed. Yes, the company blossomed. But I feel like you took off as an entrepreneur and almost, if we could say, like an entrepreneur on steroids because over that time period, you went through what I see people sometimes take a decade to go through. And one of the things that I really... Um, admired was your agility, your flexibility, your willingness to change approaches, and out, look outside the box, see what was possible, and then have a sound mind about, okay, this is a great opportunity and it's a possibility, but let me make sure I get some legal advice. Let me make sure I look at the financial. And that is, to me, one of the underlining structures or foundations for success as a business owner, you dream, you imagine, you are creative, you use the right brain, if you will, but then you take the left brain in and you tie it down and you secure it because we're still playing a monopoly game on planet earth, like it or not. So I feel as though you have become also a great supporter it, to other entrepreneurs in not only directly advising, but also kind of a great representative of what it means to be an entrepreneur. So I'm so excited to have our conversation today where we really talk about behaviors, traits, or whatever comes up. So I'm going to just throw it to you and add on or take any direction you would like to go. Yeah, I think just even going back to what you were talking about with regards to the real company, you know, I, I'd had somebody say that to me. In fact, it was a family member who had come to my clinic. So I, I had a brick and mortar clinic inside a Pilates studio and gym. So I was um, I was subletting the space. And I can remember, you know, she came in, she she took one of the classes. And at the end, she was like, you know, that's really great. Do you ever think you'll get your own space so that it can be your own company you know and I was kind of like 
<laughs> oh my goodness so you know so I went through exactly that and I think a lot of us do feel that you know you have to have you have to have your own you should have your you should. own space to yeah. because to be you know to be a real company and I and I think you know we've talked about this before and and I heard somebody say over the new year you know obviously there's new year's resolutions and all of this stuff going on and somebody said this phrase and I was like, oh my goodness, I love that. I, need, I think I need to print it out, like stick it on my wall right in front of my computer. So I see it every day. And she said, shed the shoulds. Yeah. And I was like, it's so simple. It's three words, but it's exactly what we should all do. It's shed the shoulds. You know, yeah. all these things that we think we should be doing. You know what I always would say, Emma, it's not as nice. I say we should all over ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> And, and it's so true. And, and I, you know, I was, I was that person because you feel, you know, I was working in a hospital. I had my side hustle. I'd started this clinic and I was building it up and, and it became, it became very successful. And I knew I needed to make that leap. I knew I needed to stop being the person I was in order to become the person that I needed to be, wanted to be, uh, was, was destined to be you know yes. and and that was one of the hardest things I ever did was to leave the hospital job because I've been a hospital therapist for 25 years it's what I knew it was my safe space it's where I was really comfortable and I had to stop being that person to be able to step into that now I'm a 100% full-time business owner and it's my own business and this is what I'm doing and it, it, it literally was the hardest thing that I ever had to do um, and, and looking back, I now realize that I think the mindset part of that is the biggest thing. Yes, you need to have your legal structure in place, your business structure in place. You need all, you know, you need all of the other stuff. But if your mindset is not there, you're going to struggle at every single step. And that was that was the hardest thing for me was stopping being one person to become another. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is I talked about how I felt as though once you made that decision, you just catapult, you blossomed. And this is so true in life. When we are holding ourselves back, we're fear, let's say it's fear. Um, when we finally come over that hurdle and jump in wisely, I like to say wisely, you know, let's not jump out of the airplane plane without making sure the parachute's attached, right? But when we do that, the universe just seems to kind of work with us in this magical way and everything falls into play and we become more powerful and resourceful within ourselves. And one of the things that I cannot say I know, you know, from any percentage or anything, but one of the things I've noticed over the years is when I start to speak with a client, the more they tell me what they should do, or they're trying to be this, or they're going to be this someday and get an investor and all this, the more they tell that story, the less profitable their financials are going to be. I've seen a connection. The ones that are like, well, I'm doing this and I'm making money and I'm doing that. They're profitable. But the ones that got this big like Hollywood story attached, I know already I'm going to look at a really bad financial situation. So there's something to that. Um, let's let's go a little bit into the mindset because I love that word you're using. And maybe we can dig it down a little deeper. What is the entrepreneur mindset that leads to success or what is not, whichever way you want to approach it? Yeah. And, uh, and that, that was something that I really had to really had to work on and, and, and think, what is it that I actually want? How do I want to live my life? Not how I think I should as a therapist, you know, with a clinic and a team. And, and I jumped 100% into this and I had a clinic and I had a team and I realized that I, it wasn't really what I wanted to do it didn't make me happy. I wasn't jumping out of bed every morning going, woohoo, what am I doing today? It was like, I've got to go to the clinic. And uh, it just, it something was missing. And that was quite concerning because I'd left my hospital job and here I was in my clinic. And all of a sudden I was realizing maybe this isn't what I want to be doing. I've been a therapist for 25 years. Of course, it's what, it's what I do. It's what I love. I love treating patients. What is missing? And I couldn't figure out what was missing. And so the universe took it out of my hands. And we all know what happened on March 13th of 2020. And my clinic was shut down because of lockdown. And so I pivoted. And 
we switched all of our clients to be online. My kids came home from school. They were home for 18 months. And so I didn't have the choice to go back into the clinic. I had to work with people online. And then it made me realize that I was very, I was, I was tied to the fact that if I don't put my hands on people, I don't make money. Well, that's not okay. I've got to feed my kids. I've got to pay the, the rent. I need, you know, I, I need to be able to pay the bills. And so I started looking at, okay, this has been a real wake up call for me. We've shifted everybody online. This is a totally different business model now. Um, let's run with it. Let's see what we can do. We actually added services. We added fitness classes, daily fitness classes to allow people to not feel isolated when we were all self-isolating. And, and, and it was very popular and it was successful. And people started to say to me as, as time was going on, you're never going back into the clinic, are you? And I started thinking, I don't want to. I know I don't want to go back in the clinic. And it was, it was that real shift. And I, I think it was, it was kind of looking, I really had to dig deep as to what do I want to do? Not what I think I should do. What do I really want to do? And I want to work from home or, or, or from wherever I am with my laptop. I want that freedom. I don't want to be tied down to a, a location. I don't want to have a big team to manage. I don't want to have headaches of different locations. I want freedom. I want simplicity. I want to be able to treat my patients because I love doing that, but I want it on my terms. Mm -hmm. You know what I love about what you're saying? So many things. First of all, I think we don't ask ourselves enough, what do we want? And if we do, we do a list that is maybe not feasible. And then we back out saying that it can't be done. And we go back to doing what we should. When you think about the fact of treating somebody and being a physical therapist, somebody would have said as well as yourself to yourself, there's no way you can do that online. Now, you were forced to do it online and show that there is actually a way and it can make you happy. And one of the things that I've been bringing up lately that I don't even really know how to express in words, so I'm going to just stumble a bit. But I would say that over the last three years, I'm going to use an older word that we used to use, paradigm shifts. We used to talk about that back in the 80s. Remember, everything was paradigm shifts. People were writing about it, but that's the word that comes up. But I think that we have an opportunity to create everything that did not exist before, all new. So I heard somebody say, basically, don't look to the past to create the future because the things that existed in the past don't necessarily need to, or do you want to carry into the future? So it's kind of starting from clay where all possibilities exist and not recreating the past, but recreating the future. And I think it comes back to allowing you to ask the questions what you want because the constraints of no society says you must have a business, you must be in a, uh, office space, et cetera, have really been lifted. I saw them lift during my time period. I recall when I first had my company at 20, I rented this office space and had an answering service that I couldn't afford because I had to have somebody answer the phones, right? Then I re re noticed how I could go into Starbucks, be saying, doing this big negotiation, go, hold on, I want a non-fat latte. And it would have been acceptable to the client. Well, now I think all things are open. We can have, we can work from home. We can have Zoom calls. We can do anything. So I want to invite, invite everybody to reimagine with new clay, not old clay, just being reassembled to a similar but different structure. How about cracking down all structures and say, what do I want? How can I make it work? And I'm going to end on this. And I think you'll be able to take with that is in the end, human beings still want to purchase what they want to purchase. Some of the things have not gone away. If we just stay hold true, like you want wanted people, they wanted to be out of pain. I'm putting words in your mouth, right? But they wanted to be out of pain. Eventually, they didn't care how they got out of pain. They wanted to get out of pain. And if you recognize they want to get out of pain and looked at the methods to get that information to them, it opens up a world of possibilities that, oh, pain means I touch their arm thoughts on that yeah it definitely does I mean I'm sitting here right now doing an interview with with you with a dog on my lap I mean <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought that would happen <laughs> it's so true 
<laughs> and 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 yes, and and you know, switching to online was so interesting. I mean, my my mom was the one who said, "Well, how can you do? How can you do physical therapy online?" <laughs> And my dad said, you know, well, what if people don't want to do that? And, you know, what if people want to come and see you? And and what it's done is actually just opened up geographically who I can work with. You know, I've, I've helped people in over 25 different countries now and, and counting. And it, it it's just, it's opened it up rather than shrinking it down, which I think was, you know, sort of my, my parents' worries initially. Right. It's like, oh, right. she's limiting herself so much. And it's been entirely the opposite. Yeah. And, you know, as we get the younger and younger generations, they're being brought up in this new environment. So they don't even think the limitations. I think it's just a matter of having for the younger generations learn some of the old tools that us old people know, such as strategic thought processes, critical thinking, et cetera, in that aspect. Now, one of the areas that I also thought was fascinating that you excelled in, and one of them I love to talk about is partnering with other people and small companies to create win-win situations. I've been talking about this since I've probably been in my 30s, reaching out to other small businesses, seeing if you're going after the same customer, the same dreams. I feel as though you have really monopolized that in the last year or so, and that's how you're in all these different countries. So chat about the relationships you created and how you formed within your living room these huge global opportunities yeah it's it i mean it's it, it is all down to networking it's down to relationships everything is down to relationship building and and that's certainly something that i know is sort of like almost the heartbeat of business is relationships and so i we, we transitioned to online one of my patients is in the golf industry and he, he, he said to me, he said, I've got this friend who does a podcast. He'd be great on that podcast. He connected us. So I did that podcast. And then from that podcast, another golf podcast heard me, reached out to me. They were a much bigger audience. Um, they wanted me on their podcast. So I went on there. From that, a tennis coach who has an even bigger podcast heard me on that one. And he had me on his podcast. And then he said, you know, I do this tennis summit every year for tens of thousands of, of, of tennis players. Would you be interested in presenting? Um, yeah, <laughs> that, would be, that would be amazing. And so I, I've done the tennis summit now. And again, it's an online tennis mm -hmm. summit. I've done that now twice. So this last year, um, I made some amazing connections with some of the other speakers who were speaking at the tennis summit. Two of them have asked me to partner with um, their memberships that they're offering for, for tennis players. One is, one is a tennis coach in Germany. The other is a tennis coach in Australia. And wow. so now my program is offered to their memberships um, who are obviously tennis players all over the world. Um, and and it, it just, it snowballs like that. These opportunities are everywhere. You've just got to be open to them. And you know what I find interesting is that, and I appreciate, you know, in the olden days, this is what I used to hate to do, especially during my banking years. So many people love this. I hated it. Get all dressed up, get the business suit on, do the hair, do the makeup, get in the little Mercedes because you got to look cool and rich. You drive to downtown LA in the most expensive restaurant and you sit and round with a bunch of boring people, talk about boring things, which I would have much preferred been outside in the mountains climbing just so they can give me a referral and I would go home and go, oh my God, I hate that. We don't have to do that anymore. We can build, when you're talking about networking, the need to networking hasn't changed, but the requirements of networking has. You didn't, you haven't met any of these in person, have you? Mm -mm, not a single one. Mm -mm. You know, what's interesting is that I've had my, speaking of SBDC, I've had these contracts for like a decade, right? And I have not been in LA for who knows how long, right? I forget 
who I've met and who I haven't met. There's only a few. And then I think I met them. Like I've never met Lauren in person and I'm as close to Lauren as can be. And I had to think, did I ever meet Lauren in person? No, I didn't. My point is our ability to connect and see facial features and hear voices, et cetera, is so robust that I personally don't even notice whether I've physically been in the presence. In fact, I'm probably getting where I don't want to be in the physical presence of people because it's a time constraint. <laughs> so networking really can be fulfilled. And there was this discussion in my world, well, you can't have a relationship and, you know, business relationship and not meet people. I don't think that's true anymore. No, not, not at all. I mean, I can be on a call with somebody in Canada and then my next call is somebody in the UK. And then my next call is somebody in Alabama. I mean, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting in my living room, just click on, click off. Yeah, I think the photos, I'm going to say Zoom, but it's really being able to see the facial expressions because you don't miss anything. I know people say in person it's different. And for some, I don't want to take away that emotion. I'm not been one of those, you know, touchy feely, happy, like love the world type people anyway. Right. So for me, you know, it's, it's different. And so I don't want to be speaking for all, but I am just saying that you, you are not limited in your business relationships and building your business by where your physical presence is or what dinners you go to. Those are not the cases in most situations. And, you know, some of them may be in different environments, but a small business isn't needing to conquer the world to have their financial freedom. And I think freedom, you alluded to that. Let's talk about the word freedom for a second. I think that's what we're talking about here, aren't we? Yeah, 100%. And, and that was something I had to come to that realization. Because I thought that a successful business was all about revenue, not even profit, revenue. Right. You want you know, to have that million dollar business. That's the goal, isn't it? And then when I started to talk to some of my peer group who had that, they, they'd achieved the million dollar business and they were making less profit than me. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want that. No, that's not what I, and again, I went back to what do I want actually want? Not what I think I should be aiming towards being in this particular industry. What do I actually want? Well, I want to be able to take my kids to school and pick them up every single day. I want to be able to attend every single school event, whatever it is. I want to go on the school trips. I want to be able to go home to the UK whenever I want. I don't want to have to go and ask somebody, can I take this time off? I want to take off as much time as I want. I want to be able to work from wherever I am. And, and to me, that was the freedom. And yes, you know, you, you, you need the, the finances to be able to support that lifestyle. But that to me was more important than the million dollar revenue. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a big proponent of telling people it's net income that matters. Net income is the actual number, not the revenue that matters. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was born, I think when I came out of the worm, the first thing I looked around and said, you know, some swear words, what am I doing here? Did I choose this? Oh my God. But after I got over that, where everybody says, I want love, I was like, I want freedom. My entire life has been about freedom. And I think, although it maybe started in the sixties before my time, you know, with the freedom movement, I think now we are seeing the the actualization of it. But I also feel as though there is a counter word, if you were, I don't know the right term, but there's a word that must go with freedom. And that is, and, and there's several, but I'm just bringing up one and, and it's discipline. Um, It's making sure you're making sound decisions, strategic thinking, critical thinking, because I always say freedom is not just lackadaisical, you know, just going anywhere because then you end up, you know, I, I always say not to be disrespectful. It's just a term I use, but, you know, street people who don't have any responsibilities, whatever, are not free. You know, I always used to look at that and I used to say, you know, being poor on the streets, not free. Uh -huh. Being free is having the means. And I heard something just the other day that I just loved. They said an abundance, because we always wonder what abundance is. I love this saying. It's been my new favorite one. I just heard it. Abundance is having enough money when you need it. Exactly when you need it. So let's talk a little bit, whether you want to use the word discipline, critical thinking, structure, I don't care what, but you see where I'm going. It's like, you've got to uh -huh. have a plan. Freedom doesn't just happen, does it? No, no, that's it. And, and Again, it comes, it, it, it is partly mindset, but it is, it, it, it's, it, it is those traits that, that make up you. 
And discipline is definitely one of them because, you know, there are certain things that need to be done and they need to be done on a consistent basis. So, so there's another one, consistency. Um, and, and, and one of the biggest ones that when I think about sort of like my superpowers, grit is one of the biggest superpowers that I have. Grit <laughs> is, it's, it's... I love that word. <laughs> yeah. You don't hear that much. Isn't that a little bit of a British word or something? I, I love the word grit. I think, I think so. It really is. But to like sum it up, it's, it's determination and not giving up until you actually achieve that thing. Mm-hmm. And, and I really have that. And it's interesting because I see it in my youngest son as well. He, he has it in spades and I'm like, he's going to be fine. Because <laughs> as long as you've got grit, you can achieve anything. Um, but it is. And so I, I actually have, I have traits on stuck up on my wall so that I look at them every day and I've got this discipline, confidence and commitment. Yeah. They're the three things. And I know that it's, you know, if you, if you follow that success is inevitable. If you do the things, you do them consistently and you don't give up success is inevitable. So it really is. It really yeah. is. In fact, you know, um, I don't talk about this too much, but some people in the audience may know what I'm talking about. Some people might go, oh my God, now Lori's talking about something I have never heard about. But if anybody's familiar with neuro-linguistic programming, I have been a practitioner for a long time. I, I studied it and became a practitioner, right? Well, there is a statement in NLP and it's one I've always loved and it's four steps. And the first is know your outcome, know what you're trying to achieve, right? Then the second one is take massive action towards that outcome. The three is see if you're getting the results. And the fourth is change your approach, even if that's changing a new outcome. And those are the four steps that I've always thought about. And they do lead to success because if you say, I want this, you take action towards it. You see if you're getting results and then you change your approach. I call it course corrections a lot. People hear me say that. There's no way. And that's what life's about. You know, very seldom do we know our outcome, go after and get it. Sometimes I have to say, well, Lori, you just figured out, you know, 50 ways not to achieve that. Maybe the next one will work. The old Thomas Edison thing. And and that's what grit is too. It's that, you know, constantly looking at it. How do entrepreneurs that are maybe not the younger crowd that's more open to things get some of these blinders, these restrictions, your parents' way of thinking, if you will, um, how do they get out of the mold? You broke out of the mold out of necessity in many ways. I hate when my camera does that. I have no idea why it does. So bear with it. It comes back. (laughs) I have not been able to figure that out. But you broke out of the mold out of necessity. You were kind of forced out of the mold, right? But it's such a lovely world when we're not forced and we choose. You know, when the universe forces us, it's usually not pretty. How can we get out of the old paradigms? Yeah, it, it's so, so interesting when I think about that time, because, you know, the life that I'm living right now, I most definitely would have chosen, mm-hmm. but I almost didn't know it existed yeah. until I was forced into it. And so, you know, I'm very thank- thankful for the series of events that led to me being able to do this. And obviously it was not a great time for the entire world, but it, you know, it led to me now being able to do what I absolutely love. And I, I think it is like sort of opening your mind, just, just being exposed to people who are doing the things that you want to do. You know, in the world of social media, we are exposed to so many things. There's so much you can access out there. And I was, in fact, I was just talking to a client earlier on today and she has just discovered um, a a lady who talks a lot about self-improvement and positive thinking and those types of things. And I've been aware of this lady for a long time and she's just discovered it and she absolutely loves her. And so, you know, there are podcasts that you can listen to. There are YouTube channels that you can go and binge on. There's all the social medias that you can follow. And so there's so much out there with regards to positive thinking and looking at what actually can be achieved. And I think once you start putting yourself into that environment, you're like, they can do it. So can I. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and one of the expressions I like is 
imagine what it would feel like to, and then start looking at what that may be that you're trying to achieve. And, you know, once again, I'm not trying to be the prescriber of anything, but for me personally, I watch carefully, vigilantly is the word that I like to use, what I'm allowing to come into my ears, no different than what I'm allowed to come into my body. And like mm -hmm. you said, YouTube and everything has a world of positive people out there. In other words, what, what I'm trying to say is not YouTube specifically. I'm trying to say for free, there's a yeah. lot of powerful speakers out there. It used to be in my old day, you had to pay a ticket to go see Anthony Robbins or you didn't hear him or you paid for his audio tapes, right? But yeah. now there are so many bright people with different perspectives. And what I've learned is I can learn from somebody older than me, my age, and maybe somebody 14 that's got a little you know, podcast that's talking about something because they got different eyes, going back to these different eyes. So I think that being vigilant about what information goes into your ears because that is going to also affect how you feel and your energy level, your power I talk about. And you can either up it or you can bring it down. And we've got so many wonderful choices. Say your family's negative. Well, just you know, don't listen to them and get on some other program and put powerful words. And I think I'm going to end on my statement on this is what I always do is I say, well, I'm not going to try to determine logically if this is positive or negative for me personally. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to say, how do I feel after this experience? Do I feel empowered? Do I feel disempowered? And that's what leads me to my directions. And that seems to have worked in business as well as personal. Yeah, that's that's really powerful. I love that. And and it's one reason I don't watch the news. You know, I don't allow any of that in because there's just no point at all. Um, and, and I listen to a lot of positive thinking. I listen to a lot of um, really empowering podcasts and different YouTube channels. I have my morning routine set that I follow and kind of going back to, you know, like the, the freedom, I have the freedom to live my life the way I want to live it. And I, I have routines that I follow, but I have the freedom to be able to follow those routines and do those things that I want to do every single day that I know make me feel good and then allow me to be able to help people in a better way. Gotcha. You know, one of the things in, in kind of a little direction different, Emma, I want to touch on is, you know, I mentioned about knowing when you have to make sound decisions legally or financially. One of the things you were really good at is I'm going to just use two examples and then you'll be able to fill it in. So, you know, where I'm talking, what I'm talking about is you were like, well, you know what? I can just use an iPhone and a folder and make my own videos DIY. It's perfect for my audience that I don't need any professional photographer, but I need to really make sure how I need to structure my business now because I'm international and I do have to worry about my certification. I better get a lawyer. These are knowing when to DIY and knowing when to pay some money to hire an expert. I feel like a lot of small companies get confused on those two choices and mess them up. Emma, can you chat on that? That is so true. I mean, I, I don't know how many emails I get every single day from people saying, I can do your website for you. I can do your social media marketing for you. I can do blah, 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 blah. And they want to, you know, they'll charge thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and then you've got the things like, I, I just hired a bookkeeper starting this year. Actually, it's Clarissa from Nerdy oh, Numbers. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Good joy. <laughs> So I just hired my bookkeeper, you know, and she's not charging me thousands and thousands of dollars, but for what she's going to be able to do for me, and I'm going to be able to see as I take my business forwards, um, you know, that is absolutely crucial. She's going to be giving me such great information. Um, she's going to allow me to bid on certain contracts that maybe I wasn't able to bid on before and, you know, really take my business forwards. Whereas the social media stuff and, I mean, you can get sucked down that rabbit hole and spend so much money that you don't need to spend. You know, you, if, you, if you're starting out on social media, you absolutely don't need to spend any money whatsoever. You just need to start posting, start doing the thing. Even if you have uh, a, a, a younger kid, a teenager can definitely do that for you. I mean, so, you know, my sons have helped me out with different things because they, they know... Canva, they know chat GPT, they know all of these things and they can do it so much faster than we can. 
and and you know it, it it gives them good skills practice as well so definitely do not be spending tons and tons of money on social media marketing because that is just it, you're not going to get that roi but getting the the good things in place like so i i sort of i trademarked my logo um looking at sort of copywriting my book and my courses just certain protections through there that i know i i knew i needed and going through the correct channels to do that Yes, very, very true. You know, spend money wisely. You know, I'm laughing because I have to get a new professional for t um, photo done, right? And so every time I get a professional photo, I hate, I hate, hate take, having my picture taken. So I would, you know, be like really stiff and then I wouldn't like the pictures and everything. So I set another appointment for this professional photographer and it didn't work out with the weather. And I started saying, you know, this old process isn't working. So I went on YouTube and saw some 19 year old influencer and a couple of people showing how you do the stick and you got the little thing and you take your own pictures, right? So I'm laughing at myself because here I am, you know, looking at this 19 year old and she's going, okay, so I do my hair and then I turn to the side, right? So I got my little thing, just like she told me to buy in the stick and I'm turning it and I'm going like this. I'm going, come on, boo boo, my cat, right? <laughs> And I'm like going, wow, my iPhone took a great picture. I had plenty of choices. I was relaxed. And so now I'm going to be going and I found a background and I'm going to take my own picture. So this is once again, knowing when you need to hire a professional, when you do not. I opened up my old eyes because I've always thought I had to have a professional photographer. And I wasn't so ego driven that I couldn't learn from a 19 year old influencer on how to do a selfie. That's what I really did is I learned from a 19 year old influencer how to do a selfie. <laughs> exactly. And and I mean, you know, YouTube, I think is now the biggest university ever. You can learn anything on YouTube for free. Yep. And you know, the other one I like, and I'm going to go to a point in a second is Udemy. I also watch the Udemy. You know, that's the other thing is there's so much free and expensive courses that you can take. My Udemy library is huge. I'm learning all this stuff, but I want to talk for a second about some of the platforms that you experience in Kajabi. When you first mentioned Kajabi, it was just starting out or you just started out with it. But what I have is I've got subscriptions to several companies that now are selling their videos on Kajabi. And I personally am looking this year to start doing my webinars on Kajabi as well as Udemy. So let's talk about technology and the management of selling the videos because that's a fascinating story from simplicity to using some of the companies you use fill us in on how you achieve that yeah so i as as the the my geographical world opened up with regards to the people that i could help i, I started to get people contacting me from all over the world asking for help. Well, as a physical therapist, I can I can work as a physical therapist in California. So for people outside, it's like, what can I do? How can I help them? So everything I would normally say to a patient, I said into the camera. And, and as Laurie alluded to, the first videos that I took, literally I had my dining room chair on top of the dining room table with a folder opened up like a ring binder and my iPhone just wedged in, in between it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did my videos like that. <clears throat> and so I, I did those videos and initially I would just email them out to people. So I had filmed them on my iPhone. I uploaded them to YouTube, which is free. Um, had them unlisted on YouTube. So, so it wasn't open to everybody. You had to have the link. I would email the link to somebody who bought the videos. Obviously, you know, I was using, and at the time I was using an email provider that was free. Um, and they would watch the videos. And I, I think I was using PayPal as well at the time, which is also free, you know, to, to take their money. I mean, well, I say it's free. They charge you a fee, but it's not like a monthly subscription. Right. Um, so you only pay when you get paid. Um, so, so it was very, very inexpensive. And once I started to sort of grow and get a bit bigger and, and more people were asking for the videos, I, I made the 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 next step to Kajabi. And so it's a course hosting platform. Well, it's an all-in-one. It kind of does everything. It can host your website or you can actually create your website on Kajabi. You can, uh, it's an email provider, host your courses or memberships. You can do coaching on there, uh, ho host podcasts on there. There's a whole ton of features. 
Um, and so when I shifted, the people that had been getting it through the emails came onto it and they're like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. Because now they didn't have to scroll back through all of their emails to try and find a certain video. It was all there for them. So it definitely made sense in at the time I was in my business. I wouldn't say starting out, you know, it's not where you want to start because right. it is one of the more pricey ones. They've been around for a long time and they are the best at what they do. Um, and, and as you say, um, Laurie, you know, you see a lot of people who are hosting on Kajabi because it is so robust. Yep. Um, but it's it's a great all-in-one platform. I've used it now for a number of years and it's great. You know, the the payment processing goes through there. It creates the, the, the checkout pages and everything. It's very intuitive, super simple to do. So, so yeah, I've, I kind of made that leap. Yeah, you know, being a consumer from it, a customer, I am amazed. It's well run. And so what I love about your story and the point that I want to make is that you just laid out how you start very simple, inexpensive, almost free. You experienced it to a certain level. And then when it made sense financially, you moved to Kajabi. And that's the key that I want to take away is so many small companies think, oh, I'm starting out right now. I got to go to Kajabi. And then they're spending more money than they're making. And they believe, believe, going back to the real company and the ego, I think too many people believe they have to be a certain you know experience they have to have a certain look they have to have a certain professionalism to people even wanting to buy it and yes there is a certain gate in the professionalism that you need but it's not the gate that you think it's lower than you think so figure out how can you start out small and move up don't feel as though you got to be up here just beginning and i think that's the mistake entrepreneurs make and they have it too costly they get caught up in the technology they don't understand you did your video in an afternoon using the chair and the binder other people are hiring professionals you're trying to get the best camera trying to do the best looks right out the start and they never get started so it's really kind of doing it moment by moment, situation by situation, and letting it evolve financially as you are evolving operationally as well. I think that's the key point. Yeah, absolutely. I still do all of my videos on my phone because there's there's no need for any more than that. And, and I just re-recorded the welcome video to my program. So my program initially was released at the end of 2020. So now we're like, oh, like, three years, over three years later, I've just re-recorded the welcome video to the program and I did it on my iPhone. Yeah, yeah, you know, see, and this goes full circle with what I was saying at the beginning. The old institutions, the old way of thinking, the old processes, let them be gone because today we have not only the technology, but we have an acceptance of the usage of the technology. I look at the world now as a huge playground. I just see it every day. What new toys are coming into my playground to have me have more of the experience going back to what I want using that what do I I want. And it's an old, you know, I said at the beginning, the truth will always be true. It still is true that hard work, perseverance, grit, they lead to success. And what I have identified a long time ago is in success is a mixture of intelligence and action. No action gets you nowhere. The action with no intelligence gets you nowhere. Just intelligence of thinking it with no action gets you nowhere. But you have a combination of intelligence and action. You look to see if you're getting the results. You persevere. You have the grit. You're going to get there. It's going to happen. Or you may get somewhere you didn't expect to be. That is where you needed to be and you like better. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It's so, so true. And I think it's just it's breaking out of that expectation and just, you know, the, the the best thing that you can do is just like set, set yourself a little bit of time, get a notebook, get a, a pen and just write out what would your dream day be? What would yeah. you be doing? Where would you be? Who would you be with? You know, what would what would that dream day entail? And, and so I, somebody asked me to do this a few months ago and I wrote it out and I was like, that's what I do. I, I'm living the dream. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a perfect place to get to. And, you know, I just started something. I'm calling it my toolbox. But there's times whether it's us personally, which it is us personally, even when we're an entrepreneur, but life gets us down and we can feel it just getting weighted, weighted. Maybe it was a day, a meeting, right? So I have what I'm calling my 2024 toolbox. And what I have in my toolbox, and I'm adding to it, is things that make me feel joy and I can do them in three to four minutes. And so what I've learned is that one way of coming to joy is anything Thing that creates a creativity. So in my toolbox, I bought an American Indian flute as an example, and it's a little bit of, you know, what the fingers should cover. I got a couple notes in there and I play my flute for three minutes. My cat hates it, right? In there, I've got a couple songs. I got a hum. I'm trying to learn some chants in Sanskrit. I got that in there. I even got some dance steps and I put a few yoga moves like a headstand and a bridge that I can play with, right? So it's this child like things that I can engage in to bring out the childlike joy and creativity to get me back into where I need to be to then jump back into the game if I feel like the game is getting me down. And so I share that with anybody. I think having a toolbox to keep you where you need to be because being an entrepreneur is sometimes a solo thing and you have to be solely responsible for your emotional state. Yeah, I, I think that's so true. And and just sort of looking at your toolbox there, Laura, you know, I do yoga every single day. I do meditation every single day. I journal every single day. And I dance around the kitchen making dinner to my 80s tunes every day. <laughs> it brings me joy. <laughs> exactly. I know. I always do these little, I'm too funky for my, you know, yeah, all that stuff. I do it too. And it just, it makes me happy. And be, before we end, I want to take a question from one of the audience, because I think it was an interesting question. And it was, what tips do you have for networking and building relationships online that are different from in person? And from my own biography, I noticed when I started online, I was getting where, okay, we're online. We got to get down to business. Right. And then I started noticing, wait a minute, I'm first going to connect. I'm going to look at the person's eyes. I'm going to say, how are you? I'm going to be Lori. I'm going to be humorous. I'm going to engage. So I realized that it's the same thing. Just be that way. That's my only thoughts on online versus person. Do you have any you'd like to share with Kathy who answered, asked the question? Yeah, um, I think definitely having that connection. So if, if I think about the coaches that I reached out to at the tennis summit, for example, so we're, we're all on this summit, we're all presenting, but nobody has met anybody else. You know, we're all over, the, we're literally all over the world. And so I, um, I, I sort of researched each of them. I was like, where are they? What's their website? What do they do? Would they be a good connection for me? And I emailed them. I got, I got on their newsletter list. You know, so many people, they, they have their website. You email them. They're going to start sending you emails. So you can see what kind of person are they? Do, do they actually fit with what I do and, and my values? Um, you can get a really good lot of information there and you can reach out to them and say, look, hey, um, and, and this is a perfect time to do it. It's like, happy new year. You know, what do you have planned for 2024 and how can I help you with that? I think it's always so good to, to reach out and say, how can I help you? What are you doing? Rather than, what can you do for me? Well, you know, it goes back to the truth is always the truth. Understanding somebody else, finding out where there's a combination, exploring possibilities, connecting. It doesn't matter what the forum is. The truth is always the truth. It, it is. Well, Emma, you and I could talk forever. Do you know that our time is coming to an end, believe it or not? Um, I truly hope that those in the audience have experienced the inspiration and uplift that I have during this conversation. I think it's a good one to have, and I'm going to have as many guests on as I can, because this year is about beginning new with a whole new concept in mind and finding out what we want, what we want to create and living all the possibilities known and unknown. Any final last words, Emma, you'd like to share? Yeah, I, I think just, you know, just really dig deep, figure out who you are and what it is that you want, but be authentic to yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah. Authenticity is really a key word. I love that one. That's why I always say I'm I'm going to be authentic or I'm not going to do it because that's where you find your power. Once again, I'm all into finding my joy creativity and power. Well, with that, another person that I just love and is so uplifting, let's bring Lauren back into the show. Hey, Lauren, what, <laughs> what do you think about that? Was that I, I, I'm speaking for myself personally. I loved this show. I know. It's amazing. And Emma, just your authenticity, you said authenticity, but your authenticity just totally shines through every single time we have you. So oh. thank you. This but is you so know, great. We're going to have you again and again because I, I, you know, and the thing is, Emma, every time I come, you come back on, you've experienced so much more. It's yeah. fascinating. I feel like, you know, from your kids, Lauren and Emma, you have kids, how there's like this time period where the kid just grows overnight and keeps, <laughs> that's who you, that's you, Emma. I feel like 2019, you're like in the kid where, oh my God, they already are into five <laughs> pair of shoes. <laughs> so well, true. We are out of time. I could continue this forever, but we've got to say goodbye to next week. So Emma, thank you again. Lauren, thank you for all you do. I know Lauren's going to stay um, stay along, stay on the show for a little bit for anybody who wants to get in touch with me, um, talk about finance, tax, um, legal, anything you want to discuss. Lauren will be that conduit. Just get an email. She'll give you the information and it comes directly to me. I want to thank everybody in the audience, our frequent flyers that are there, our new people who joined us. Thank you for watching Small Big Talk with your host, Lori Williams, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, Emma. Bye. bye, Emma. Bye, Lori. Thank you both. All right, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me while I clear my throat. Uh, let me go ahead and put... <clears throat> I'm going to put a link to our YouTube in there one more time. Let's drop that in there. I'm also going to add my email address. I think I saw a message about how to get in contact with Lori. So let me... <clears throat> excuse me, include that. Uh, here we go. And then lastly, let me repost Emma's contact information so that you all know how to get in contact with her. Here we go. All right, perfect. Okay, so you now have the link to our YouTube. You also have my email address so that you can get in contact with Lori if you'd like to set a meeting with her. And then finally, I've included or re-included Emma's contact information so that you guys can get in contact with her. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again. We will see you next week, 10 a.m. Um, let's see what date is next week. Hmm. Next Wednesday is going to be the 17th. So we'll see you next week. That's going to be Wednesday, January 17th at 10 a.m. for another episode of Small Biz Talk Solutions for Your Small Business. Take care. Bye.